Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. I know that you know that my number one priority at the Sheriff's Office is for all of us to protect the community and specifically our children, which are the youngest and the most vulnerable. My detectives are simply the very best, and the, they've been at work again. Today we're going to talk about child pornographers. Now I want to underscore that data tells us that if child pornographers had the opportunity, the overwhelming majority of them would in fact sexually batter children. So our goal is to get these folks out of circulation, get them arrested for their evil deeds, and what we're going to talk about today, you'll, I think you'll agree, is evil deeds before they have the opportunity to victimize children in person. Why do I say that? Because anytime you buy, sell, trade child pornography and view it, then the child who's in that child pornography is re-victimized. Um, I will underscore today that even though we seized 1,276 images of horrible, frightening child pornography, in this particular operation we did not identify any victims that we could rescue. And that's our primary goal. 1,276, that was felony two charges. Actually, we had four felony three for a total of 1,280 criminal felony counts or charges. Now, folks, children have been victimized through video clips and or still photos. And I'm joined today by our state attorney's prosecutor, Brian Haas simply has the best state attorney's office. Brad Copley has prosecuted these cases for years and worked with our folks on the search warrants and the arrest warrants. As we targeted these folks who are victimizing children with just the swapping and selling and looking at child porn, but you're going to hear much more in just a minute. All of these people which is unusual are from Polk County. They should know better because we're coming after everyone who does this with a vengeance and will chase you to the ends of the earth. And you've been here in the past when we, in fact, chased one all the way to Australia. But what you're not going to see today, for good reason, is the screaming and hollering of the children in pain and agony and fear why they're being sexually battered. That's right. My detectives have to see the video clips of the children screaming in pain and fear and agony because of evil monsters that are creating the child porn that these people are swapping and enjoying in their deranged mind. But it's important that we go over these folks because I want you to have a full understanding of just how nasty they are. They're nasty, nasty people. First, let me introduce you to David Sparks. He's 66 years of age. He's retired. He was in customer service, and he's married. He's charged with 350 counts of child porn that we found on a CD. We found that these children that were being sexually battered were between three months old and 12 years old on the porn that he had. His wife of 10 years is a retired child protective services worker out of Missouri. She had no knowledge of his evil deeds and was absolutely mortified because she spent years and years and years protecting children only to have his secret life destroying children's lives. Because you see, if there weren't people to watch child porn, there wouldn't be anybody making child porn. And you see him from the outside, as the detective said, he looks like a nice old grandfather. Until you get into his digital devices and see the evilness that lurks behind the curtain. 
Then there's Stefan Young. He's 58. Stefan has a business, a photography business called Enchanting Boudoir. And I'm from Polk County. To me, that's like taking pictures of people in their underwear, okay? But they call it Enchanting Boudoir. So we started an undercover operation against this guy because we had a concerned citizen who saw his advertisements on Craigslist that he would take photographs of people in their underwear. And he found out that they would do this also for children. So he called on us, and we appreciate this man in the community being curious, making a phone call, saying, ooh, there's something here, and notifying us, so we went undercover. He claimed that he had taken photographs of children as young as 13, not only in their lace and silk underwear, but sometimes totally nude. But he bragged that he did this with the parents' authorization. Now, we don't know who these children are yet. We don't know who these parents are yet. But I want to tell you parents something. If you're having your children's nude photographs taken by Stefan Young or anybody else in provocative, sexual, lacy underwear, we're going to put you in jail, too. That is not all right, ever. In addition to that, he said he would do dressed and undressed pictures with the undercover's children. And he said, but listen, if Grady Judd finds out, we're in trouble. Because, see, he'll take art and make it pornography. Well, Stefan, it's pornography, it's not art, and your ugly mug is in the county jail. That's right. He knew he was going to be in trouble when we figured it out, because Grady Judd takes art and makes it pornography. He justified this as art. It's not art when you're taking nude pictures of children. It's not art when you're in possession of child porn. And he also said he had, once again, this is his communication, we need these victims, that he had physical contact, physical sexual contact with two girls as young as 9 and 11 years of age. We don't know where they are. We need those victims. We're looking for them. And then he told the undercover another Grady Juddism. Don't talk to Grady Judd. If you do, I'll go to jail. He was right. He's in jail. He knew what he was doing was wrong, or he wouldn't have been concerned that Grady Judd knew. Listen, he's still under investigation. There are people in this community that know of his evilness, that know that, according to his statements, not ours, that he sexually battered children, that he took photographs, nude photographs, of little children. We want to find those victims. Help us out. This is a bad man, and we want him to go to prison for a long time. And then there's Paul Val. He's 40 from Davenport. He's married. He works at Disney World at Cosmic Ray's Restaurant. In fact, he just recently moved to Polk County from Indiana, and he moved here specifically to work at Disney World. Well, you know, back in the day, they arrested Willie Sutton for robbing banks. He was a notorious bank robber. And they asked Willie Sutton, hey, Willie, why do you rob banks? And he said, well, that's where the money is. 
Well, why do people like Paul Vell work at Disney? Because that's where the children are. And they want to be around children. He had 540 counts of child pornography from newborns to eight years of age. He also had videos. And he's, he was a sadio masochist. There was photographs where they had tied up babies in preparation for sexual battery. There was one where a child was just weeks old where they had the child's hands tied behind her back. Can you believe that? A very young child with her hands tied behind her back. There's videos of a three to six month old being sexually battered by an adult male. His wife asked, she's only been married to him for a year, did I marry a monster? Yes, you did. You married a monster. By the way, when we kicked the door in, he came to the door nude. Think about this for a minute. Photographs of children bound up, some with their hands tied behind their backs. Infants. Infants. Then there's J. Holmuth, 52, of Lake Leesbury. We investigated this guy a while back and could not establish enough probable cause to arrest him. So he got a really, really lucky break that we couldn't get there on that last child porn investigation. But he had a shot over the bow. He had a warning. But he went back and he did it again. And we got him this time. You know what this rascal did? What his job was? He worked at the warehouse at Publix making potato salad. Now, I don't know what kind of potato salad it was, but you're safe to eat it now because he's in the jail, and we're not letting that rascal make potato salad in the jail. But that potato salad maker would also watch child porn when he could. He's been married 26 years. He carried micro SD cards in his wallet, maybe so he could drop one in a device and watch, you know, when he was away from home but he carried micro SD cards in his wallet. If you've ever ordered potato salad and you had a micro SD card in it, return it to us because it's illegal what he has on it. Shane Osborne, 33, Polk City. He works at Best Buy Warehouse in Polk City as well. He had 200 images of children between the ages of 1 and 13 years of age, he confessed. He said, but it's all a mistake. It's a mistake. I want you all to know that. Because what I was looking for is bestiality photographs of people having sex with, like, dogs and horses. I've got a word for that. Nay, that's illegal. Horses don't want to be messed around with. And neither do dogs. They can't testify. But if you'll find any dogs he's been around, we'll give him a, a sex battery test and see if we can figure out enough physical evidence to charge him with that. But that's his excuse. Hey, I didn't mean to download this child porn. 201 counts, and you didn't mean to? It was an accident. You were looking for adults having sex with dogs and horses, man, you are a messed up individual. Then there's Reed Donaldson, he's 24. He also works at Best Buy, but he works and sells at Posner. He would go by the alias online as Aaron. He had 11 counts of child porn children between three and nine years of age. We arrested him at work. 
I don't know if we had to say, excuse me, customer, but he can't sell you a television right now because he's going to jail. But if you'll buy that television from Best Buy and turn it on, you can see his picture on it in a few days. They're all in jail. He's in jail. But William is married too. William Kuvas, 49, from Auburndale. He works for Coca-Cola in Auburndale. He had 67 counts of child porn, but to children between 6 and 10 years of age. I'm sorry, children between 4 and 12 years of age. He had two children at home. I underscore there were no photographs of his children in the child porn, and his wife was horrified. Not only was he looking at child porn that covered the age range of his children, his wife is horrified, and no, his children weren't involved. We screened them, and that's the first thing we do. The only bright spot in this investigation is apparently from all indications that the children weren't involved. Mama, you got time now. He's in jail. You don't want him around your children. Not with that kind of nastiness. Brian Thomas is 39 from Haines City. He's unemployed. He lives with mom and dad. Well, isn't that sweet? You're unemployed. You won't work. You're so sorry you won't work. You won't take care of yourself. Mom and daddy always will be your mom and daddy. They take you in, and the thanks that they get is we search their house with a search warrant because you're in possession of child porn of children between five and seven years of age. Oh, by the way, he liked to play computer games. We saw his gaming computer, and you know, you can talk to children on these gaming computers as well as play games with them and groom them all while he's living at home with mom and dad. These are all filthy individuals. We're going to do our very best to send them to prison for a very long time. But the investigation against them goes on. All of their devices have not been completely forensically examined, so there will be additional charges filed against these folks. We know that we need on our board wear guy, or underwear guy as we say in Polk County, we need people to cooperate with us because we know there are victims out there that we're unaware of. We always strive to identify the victims in the photographs, and that investigation will go on as we work with the Nick Nick as well. As I close out today, here's a warning to the, those in the community. We're coming after you. If you're a child predator, if you're involved in child pornography, you are at the top of our list of people to investigate and arrest. You're not going to victimize the children. You're just not going to victimize our children. Any questions? Sheriff, you said the men were from Polk County. Is there, and I know that you're working with Bruce to establish who these victims are. Do you suspect or believe that any of the children might be from Polk County as well? In this day and age, it is so easy to make child porn. Anybody with a half-decent cell phone is, can be in the business. So why way back in the day, before and in the beginning of the internet days, child porn was very rare and very difficult to first make and then obtain. It was easier to track where it came from and most of it, quite frankly, came from overseas. Today, it's, there is a possibility that it occurred here my detectives who have to look at this horrible stuff every day recognize some of it as being on the queue and it's just moved around the country and the world. We don't have any specific information 
right now that any of it was made here, but it's certainly not beyond the realm of possibility. Most of this child porn today is not what we would call professional lighting, professional photography grade child porn. It's somebody at home with a cell phone. Some of it they go to a little further extent. But it's all horrible and we always want to find the victims, but even if we find the victims and rescue them, every time that image is downloaded, that baby is reoffended, is re-victimized. And that's what we see is once it's out there, it's out there. And stopping it is remarkably difficult. There's also the dark web. There are evil people on the dark web that we are investigating. We're going after them. They're, it's more difficult. They think they've got it all figured out. But there's people on the dark web that we're not getting to yet that are just as evil as these folks, but maybe more tech savvy. We're investigating them too. Don't relax. Our folks are figuring out new ways and new methods to investigate you every day. Anything else? Um, you mentioned that, you know, I noticed you're bringing out that their occupations. Uh, are you trying to say, too, I mean, in looking at them, if you saw them on the street, would the average person say, hey, there's the child predator? Talk a little bit about that. That's important to understand that when we deal with these kinds of, of very dangerous criminals. They're not traditional criminals. You don't see long criminal histories. What you see is people who have committed crime by hiding the entire life that they, this life, this hidden life. Many of these people have a public life and a secret life. We truly believe the wives whenever they said, we didn't know, because it's not uncommon for them to hide this from everyone. So when you see them on the street, they can look like Joe Average Citizen, just like the detective said, this one guy looked and acted and carried himself like just an old nice grandpa until you saw his secret side and you saw that he's attracted to infants and that he watches child pornography and then our research shows us that the majority of these people given the opportunity would sexually batter children and children are being sexually battered all over this nation and across and around this world every day by people just like this that's why we have to go after them. And it's easier to get the child predators than it is the child pornographers. Because if they're strictly child pornographers, they move a lot of this on the dark web and it makes it more difficult for us to catch them. Whereas if they're wanting to attract or find children, they have to surface and go to where the children play. So in many respects, it's easier to identify the child predator, the overt child predator than it is the covert child pornographer. Does that make a guy like Paul, the, the Disney guy, that much more scary because he was around and working with kids every day? Absolutely. And and you must understand, you know, when you when you go back to the some of the origins of the word pedophile, it means child lover. These people love children. In their deranged minds, many of them believe, even though socially it's not acceptable, legally it's illegal, but in their mind they think loving children is as normal as a normal heterosexual relationship between two consenting adults. Some of them believe that, especially our child predators. Even though they'll tell you, oh I know it's illegal, I know it's not right. They've got this internal mechanism that triggers and they'll go after your children 
And if you're not all up in your children's business, if you don't know what they're doing online, if you're not monitoring it, if you're giving them space, you can be sure of one thing. The child predators fill in the space that you're giving them. You've got to be all up in your children's business. Okay? Thank you very much.